and he paid like thirteen thousand dollars for my plane ticket. And honestly, the most amazing experience and trip of my life. Mm-hmm. I just ate the most expensive and unique food you could think of. It, countless meals over a thousand dollars would let me use his car whenever I needed or wanted and it is like a super nice Mercedes Hello everyone, it's Joe Spital and today Joe is being fatally honest. In this episode, Joe tells us the amazing perks he enjoyed while being a premium male escort. He also discusses how he started escorting internationally. Want to know more about Joe's crazy experiences within the sex industry? Many more episodes can be found in the playlist linked in the description down below. Disclaimer. I do not endorse entering the sex industry under any capacity. I strongly suggest that no one attempt to copy anything they've seen or heard in my videos. Furthermore, I do not necessarily agree with any of the opinions or stories told by my guests in my videos. Other than earning money, were there any perks to being a high-class male escort? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, hands down yes. Um, pretty much whatever client that I was with, I would always get a really good meal, um, like super expensive meal out of it. Um, and countless times you'd go out to a place where like your client is really good friends with the owner of the restaurant. So you get like the back table and the special menu that's yeah. not on the menu. There's like <laughs> so many things like that. Are there any additional benefits other than being wine and dine at exclusive restaurants? There was one client that um, in Singapore that would get me like the the nicest hotel. I don't I don't know if anybody knows of the Fullerton, but it was like Ooh. the presidential suite in the Fullerton. So it was like really awesome hotel rooms that I would get out of it. Um, really amazing meals. Um, and sometimes uh, they would say, oh yeah, I own this. Just tell them that you're coming and I sent you. And I just get in like for free to like gyms or to wherever really. Yeah. Like just so many cool things. Um, I, I had a, a guy that um, would let me use his car whenever I needed or wanted. And I, it's almost my car. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is like a super nice Mercedes. Um, it's really, really awesome. Uh, to uh, have all the uh, luxury mm-hmm. things that um, I had with all the all the clients, they they would fly fly me to places in first class. Um, it was just like really nice stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they would um, fly you out of the country to. Um... One of my most memorable flights was to uh, Philippines to mm-hmm. meet one of the. Uh, top guys in a credit card company. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, he was like a CEO of a very well-known credit card company. Yeah. Um, and uh, he, he would uh, take me to really, really unique places. Like one time he took me to a 7-Eleven in Manila, Philippines. Okay. And I'm like, what are we doing here? He's like, just wait for it. <laughs> He's like, just wait for it, mate. You're gonna love this. And so I walk in there and he, there's this like bodyguard guy like standing in front of this like closet and he like scoots over to the side and opens the door and I walk in and I'm like, okay, this is a closet. What the fuck? <laughs> and then I open up another door and it's like this huge club in there with like all this craziness going on. It's wow. a totally secret club behind 7-Eleven. That is so crazy. And, yeah, and then like he takes me to another place. I go into this uh, bar. It's like a normal bar. Yeah. And then in the back side of that bar, there's this like giant like Narnia looking cupboard, and um, yeah, it's weird. It's like a coat covered thing, and there's a, another guy standing in front of it, and 
he opens up the cupboard door and there's like a bunch of coat jackets just like hanging up and like you have to like scoot the coat jackets out of the way and like you go through and then you're in this like cigar bar this like secret cigar bar it's super super cool yeah it was super cool and like you could like order a bottle of whatever uh, alcohol you wanted and then like if you didn't drink it they would like put your name on it and like save it for you on the shelf like I think a lot of the dining experiences were a highlight Um, Mm -hmm. I just ate the most expensive and unique food you could think of at countless meals over a thousand dollars it's just really uh, really awesome food and I like that part (laughs) (laughs) So a lot of these trips are all paid expenses then? Yeah, absolutely. If I wanted to do extra things, like sometimes they'd buy me a hotel room and I would call an escort over for myself. (laughs) Even though I'm on their dime, like being an escort for them, I need my own escort. So it it was crazy, you know, and I, I would definitely spend money on like gifts and stuff to bring back to people. And But for the most part, it was all. Paid. expenses yeah. paid yeah how old were you when you started escorting internationally and how did that happen 23 to 24 mm-hmm. um there was a point in time where i met this uh, man that would uh, he um became a really really huge influence in my life and um he wasn't he wasn't a client he was just a friend yeah. but um he became a huge influence in my life and really a mentor to me. And um, he took me to um, Singapore for the first time. He paid like $13,000 for my plane ticket. Cool. It was like amazing. I was on the Emirates and there was like a bar on the plane. And I think I had like 23 mojitos on my flight. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was awesome. But um, I get to Singapore and it was... I just caught the travel bug after that. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And then like, he was a very, very wealthy guy. Yeah. And after spending a few days in Singapore, I actually I met this really uh, beautiful girl there um, who uh, she's this Indian Indian girl. And um, we kind of talked for each other and we started this like long distance relationship for mm-hmm. two years. and. Um, eventually I went back and saw her and that's kind of when it all started but kind of like uh, when I went to travel with him I like went to Taiwan for like a, a dinner and then like we would fly to like Hong Kong and then like go through the border to China Shenzhen and then yeah. it was just totally crazy it opened my eyes to uh, Southeast Asia yeah and um, he really helped me experience an amazing awesome time and um, I uh, eventually decided to go back to see that girl that I uh, fell for, and um, when I arrived, we broke up. And <laughs> I know it was terrible. And I uh, like she was she was pretty wealthy, and yeah. like I I feel like it was kind of in the air that she was going to help me. I ended up um, breaking up with her and having like a few hundred bucks, and I didn't have a return flight until mm-hmm. like a month later. I got down to my like last 50 bucks yeah. and um, I spent a little bit of money on a hostel and um, I posted an ad on Backpage and then um, through Backpage I ended up just escorting in Southeast Asia and just kind of going all around to Indonesia, to uh, Philippines, to um, I didn't go to Malaysia but there's a lot of people that really want me to go to Kuala Lumpur (laughs) and it really worked out really well I met really wealthy people that gave me awesome perks and uh, would give me free hotel rooms and just help me save my money and it it was an amazing thing I even I met one client that I ended up trusting so much because I couldn't put my cash into the bank because I used Bank of America and Bank of America doesn't have any branches in uh, in Singapore. Yeah, so I was kind of a little bit screwed there. So I asked him to hold on to my money, and uh, he did. And he was totally honest with me. And yeah, so I, I met really um, nice people over there that became long-term friends that I still even talk to today. I ended up um, 
coming home with about like four or five thousand dollars I think and had honestly the most amazing experience and trip of my life it was, it was fun living on the edge a lot of the time, you know, not knowing where your next place is that you're going to stay or your next meal is going to come from. And it is a really exciting. It is truly astonishing how much money some parts of society are willing to spend on luxuries. The business relationship between an escort and a client seems to be based on mutual trust that one will not reveal the other. In the next episode, Joel tells us his experiences of escorting internationally as well as reflecting on why he retired from the sex industry. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe and ding the bell for future content. It's been Faithly Honest, ciao!